Algorithms. The word that you use to make yourself sound 20 hundred times smarter. Hey dude, how did you solve that problem? I use a lot of algorithmic problem solving and ultimately applied my well-renowned algorithm that I use for every single problem to tell you that one plus one is two. <gasps> All right, maybe not. Maybe, maybe algorithms is a lot more than that. Just kidding, it is. Today, we're gonna be talking about exactly what algorithms are and why they're actually very, very, very legit. Hello everybody, I'm Karar and today we're going to be covering algorithms. The introduction to algorithms. Algorithms are extremely, extremely important. So today's video, I'm going to be talking about why that is, how we can measure how exactly good they are, and also what kind of algorithms we need to learn in order to be good at use of Go. So why? Why must we learn about this word algorithm? The answer? Because we want robots to take over the world. That's right, we want Terminator in real life. But seriously though, algorithms can save lives. Already, like AI, have already been able to diagnose diseases better than human doctors. We have robots that are able to rescue people. We have like quadcopters that are able to fly in formation. There are all these cool AI things, and algorithms are a lot more than that even. They basically let us solve things a ton faster, use space more effectively, use our hardware more effectively. Like seriously, why would we want to depend on hardware people to do our work when we could use their hardware to so much more? So when we come back to Yusuko, Yusuko is basically focused on the speeding up aspect of algorithms. And the speed up we can get is insane! Like, let me show you a very, a very good motivating example. So my man Fibonacci, you might have heard of him, he's like not as famous as me, but like, he made this thing called the Fibonacci sequence. Let's say that we theoretically want to generate the nth term of that sequence. Well, the obvious solution might just be to use recursion, right? After all, my man Fibonacci, he said, fn is equal to fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. So, if we do that, look at my fib bad. Okay, you can probably tell that it's a bad algorithm by the name, but it is a bad algorithm. It basically says, if we want the 0th term, we return 0. If we want the 1st term, we return 1. Otherwise, we return fn minus 1 plus fn minus 2. Seems legit, right? Seems like it should work. But nope! Alright, alright. Let, let me show you what I mean. So we do fib bad, bad. I know how to spell. And then let's try. Let's just let's start small, okay? Let's try five. Our fifth Fibonacci sequence term is just one, one, two, three, five. All right, cool. So it could get the fifth Fibonacci sequence number thing. I don't know. And then if we want the tenth one number, it should be fine, right? Right? I mean, all right, not bad at all. Why don't we try something like uh, you know, let's just go with a hundred, okay? Maybe 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 we could do a hundred. Actually, let, let, let's, let's give it a little bit of slack and give it 50. Let's see, can we get the 50th one? Alright, 1, 2, 3, 4, 13, 14. Bruh. Alright, this is not gonna work, this sucks. Hmm. Fibonacci, you failed me. Okay, well, when Fibonacci defined his sequence, he probably wasn't thinking of computers. And honestly, there's a better way to do this, a lot better. See, he's still running. So basically what our current thing is doing, is it basically doing the same thing over and over again. Let's use our example of 50. So we start with our 50th term, right? We're saying that it's our 49th term plus our 48th term, right? So we calculate our 49th term and our 48th term. But to calculate our 49th term, we had to calculate the 48th plus the 47th. And then we had to do the same for this. But then we're calculating the 48th one like 500 times. And then we're calculating 47 like 500 times. And we're just doing the same thing over and over and over again. This is not smart. We could do better. So we move on and do a cooler thing. So as you can tell by the name, this is a better algorithm. We basically start with our first and second Fibonacci number. So while we have to keep going up, we shift over this number, right? So this becomes a one. And then we set this one to the sum of the two. So let me let me write this out. So basically we're starting with zero, one, right? And then we go to one, one. And then we shift over this one and we put the sum in the next box. So we put a one here and then the sum here. And then we put the second one, and then the sum here, and then the second one, and then the sum here. And see, we're always keeping the two consecutive Fibonacci numbers. And then eventually we'll get to our nth Fibonacci number. So let's say we want our sixth Fibonacci number. We know that it will be five and then eight, and then eight and then 13. And then now we have a Fibonacci sequence, look. The zero number is here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So we got our eight. And we don't have to recompute the same thing over and over and over again. We just went through it in one line. And see, we're gonna we're gonna 
Get this 50 in no time. Let's see. So fib good. Run. One. Two. I didn't even get to two and it already has it. And we could even go higher. We could literally go to like 10,000 and it'll still find it. One. Jesus. I literally didn't. What? That's right. Algorithms are insane. So basically, we literally just be a little smart. Just a, just, a, just a tiny bit smart. And we got so much faster. That, my friends, is why algorithms are so, so important. And in really big data sets, this could be the difference between taking years on a project and just like days. So essentially, this is like insane, insanely good, and it basically helps us with everything. But what's the point of having legit algorithms if you can't measure how legit they are? Well, that's why we got a measure for legitness for algorithms. And it's called Big O Notation. So given that it's called Big O, we draw a big O, obviously. That, 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 that's no, okay? But big O Notation basically tells you how fast it goes. So let's say we have O of N. So it basically says that if you're given N items, your algorithm will take proportional to N as long. So that means if you double the number of inputs you put in your algorithm, it'll take twice as long to finish. If you made it O of N squared, then if you double the input size of N, it would quadruple how long it takes. So an example of an O of N algorithm is just a for loop, right? You just go from one to N, and if you double that, it takes twice as long to loop through twice as many things. However, if you do a for loop of one to n, like this, and then within that for loop you put another one, then if you double n, then you have to do 2n times 2n, which is 4n squared, which is quadruple your speed. So this would be an O of n squared algorithm. Now, what the heck does this have to do with these code? And the answer is that, based on how big your n is, you know that Yuzuko gives you like a limit on how big n is. It usually says like n is less than or equal to 100 or n is less than or equal to 1000. Basically this will tell you what algorithm you can use. So basically what you do is you basically plug in your maximum n into this. So let's say you have n is less than or equal to 100. If you have an O of n squared algorithm, you plug it in, 100 squared is equal to what? 10 to the fourth. And basically in Yuzuko, this algorithm will work essentially whenever the answer is less than 10 to the 9. So, if we only have 100n, we can even go all the way up to 100 to the 4th power. So basically, an n to the 4th algorithm will work when n is less than or equal to 100. Let me do a quick breakdown for you boys. So basically in gold, a lot of the times n is less than or equal to 10 to the 5th. That basically limits your algorithms to something that's O of n, or O of n log n. So O of n is basically iterating through an array once, and n log n is basically sorting an array once. If you have n is less than or equal to 10 cubed, then you could use O of n squared or these two. If you got 10 squared, then basically any algorithm is fine, honestly. O of n cubed or O of n four works sometimes. O of n four is like kind of iffy, usually that's not a thing, but it might work. And then 10 or less, like if it says n is less than or equal to 10, you could basically do any algorithm. I'm not like, I haven't seen many of those types of problems, but yeah, it's like, Eh, epic. So that's basically all you gotta do for measuring algorithm legitness. So now we know that algorithms are super useful and we can measure how useful they are using big O notation. So basically I'm gonna end this video by showing you guys a list of what algorithms I think are useful for you guys to know for years ago and I'll go in more in depth on them in actual videos. But for now, I'm just gonna list it out so that if it takes me a while to get these videos out there, you guys could go study on your own. So let's start, all right. I'm just gonna straight up put them on here and then you can look at them for reference. All right, I listed them all out here. Let me just go through them real quick. So first we got our BFS over here and that basically is breadth for search if you want to search that up. DFS, depth for search, dynamic programming, sorting, Dijkstra's, prims, cross schools, Floyd Warshall segment trees, and binary search tree. Very cool. I will make videos on these in the future, but for now, this is what we got to know for years ago. I haven't really seen many problems that are outside of this, but a lot of them have like specific applications that are like a little bit modified from these things. So that's all I got for introduction to algorithms. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like and subscribe for more. If you guys want me to do any specific algorithms first, I'm going to personally start with BFS and DFS first and then move on to the other ones, but if there's anything in particular you want me to cover, let me know.
Other than that, thank you guys again for watching and see you guys next time.